Hello and welcome to Zero Hanger TV. I'm your host, Phoenix Trudeau, and today we are breaking down the predicted lineups for the 2024 Week 1 AFL Finals. And to help me through that all is our AFL writer, Frank Seal. How you going, mate? Good, thanks, Phoenix. How are you? I'm um, pretty good, pretty excited. Um, you know, I've had the bye week, we're coming into finals. Lineups or teams will come out uh, starting Wednesday night, yep. I believe, for the first game. Um, but We've got our predictions. So Port Adelaide versus Geelong Thursday night, Adelaide mm. Oval, 7.40, massive game. Uh, let's take a look at our predicted ins and outs. So we have for Port, uh, Charlie Dixon, Todd Marshall coming in to replace Kane Farrell, Dan Dante Vizantini. And then for Geelong, we're looking at Sam DeConi and Gary Rowan uh, to replace Stanley and Jed Buse. Now we'll get to Geelong in a moment, but I guess the first, the big thing for Port Adelaide is um, Kane Farrell coming out. Yeah, so Ken Hinckley and Port Adelaide have a halfback dilemma. So uh, Kane Farrell and Dan Houston not there. They're probably the two best kicks in the team. Farrell with the hamstring, obviously. Um, they do have Ryan Burton and Josh Sin as like their potential replacements. We haven't named them. They probably won't get the nod. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a big point of the game and Chris Scott will probably be looking to exploit that with the two weeks prep. Uh, Port Adelaide's forward lineup is also a bit of a story. Do they play like Dixon and Marshall both, especially with Georgiades there as well? Do they get in each other's way? That's probably something to watch. Asaba Radaglia probably goes down back. He's probably been better yeah. up forward, taking a lot of marks. Uh, not the best set shot kick, but um, a very capable forward. Um, but someone's got to stop Jeremy Cameron and you'd probably prefer Aaliyah Aaliyah to roam free. Yeah. So that's probably how that goes. Uh, Dante Vizantini wasn't great in the um, last game he played. Jordan Sweet probably gets that nod there and because Van Solder has been out of favour as well. And then just for um, substitute purposes, Frankie Evans probably gets the, name, uh, the nod as the sub with yep. Jed McEntee probably taking the Tom Stewart role. Um, yeah, so now Geelong. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously... The Gary Rowan possibly coming in, uh, he was a bit disappointing in that VFL performance, but uh, the bigger sort of story is Sam McConey. Yeah, so uh, one thing to consider, Tom Stewart and Lawson Humphreys both named. They were just managed in the back half of that West Coast game, so nothing to worry about there. Yep. Sam DeConing is a story. He will return. The question is whether he plays ruck or back, and that probably has... So Reece Stanley's spot probably depends on whether where uh, Sam DeConing plays. Um, it's hard to say what you prefer because neither... Port Adelaide's key forwards or ruck situation is something to really worry about. So it's probably where you'd prefer De Koning to play. Yeah. Hasn't been the standout defender that he was in 2022. And, but he's been better in the ruck, but not the strongest ruckman. So it's one to watch there for Chris Scott. And then Gary Rowan is the big one. because he's, he's that finals barometer. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, wasn't very good in that VFL game. But there's every reason that he could just explode in the finals yeah. like he did in 2022. So definitely one to watch there. Yeah, he is one of those players that you can just throw into a finals game and apparently just turns it on. Yeah. So um, really interesting game. It's I'm going to predict that it's going to be a, a Port Adelaide win. I'm pretty confident. Also, I think that it'd just be the funniest outcome if Port Adelaide <laughs> made it all the way through to the grand final and win it um, based on what happened to Ken Hinckley this year, getting booed by his own fans. So yeah. I, I think that's more what I want to happen. I kind of want Port Adelaide to win it just for the just for the gags. Um, but what do you think? Who do you think is going to take oh, this one Well, out? it's tough to bet against Chris Scott after two weeks of prep. He's yeah. probably the best coach in the comp, but could be Port Adelaide's time. Yeah. Like, and it's yeah, it's running, running late for Ken Hinckley to finally get that grand final berth. And if they're going to do that, they probably need to win this game. Yeah, absolutely. They've been around the they've been around the mark for so long. Okay, looking ahead to Friday night now. So Western Bulldogs taking on the Hawks, probably the game of the round for me. Um, yep, for sure. Even though they're there at the bottom end of the eight and just squeezed into the eight, um, this is probably the most exciting game for me. Um, so for Western Bulldogs coming into the side, we do have uh, Riley West and Jason Johansson in for Vandermeer and Arthur Jones. And then for Hawthorne, CJ coming in for Harry Morrison. So let's take a look first at Western Bulldogs. Uh, Jason Johannesson, probably the major talking point there. Yep, and just another one as well. Adam Trelaw being managed in the back half of the round 24 game. So he's back, no stress there. Yep. Jason Johannesson uh, returned in the VFL qualifying final last week. Um, he was he's in line to return and probably likely to return. He had, I think he had 18 disposals in that game. He was pretty solid. Provide some crucial halfback dash if you were to return um, alongside Bailey Dale and Lockie Bramble. Uh, the forward mix is also something to watch at the Bulldogs. So Latham Vandermeer, we've ousted there in favour of Riley West. That's probably, we assume that's going to happen. They're both contenders for that small forward um, spot though. Um, 
there's a selection dilemmas at the Bulldogs though, which is healthy because they had a lot of standout performers in the VFL game. Mm. Uh, James Harms was one who had 36 disposals, eight tackles and a goal. Yeah. Um, also Buku finals Ka experience from James Harms. Yeah, that's yeah. true as well. Melbourne Premiership player, as you know, Phoenix. Uh, Buku Kamis was impressive up forward in yep. a different role there. So he kicked two goals from nine marks. Hard to see him being named forward and yeah. probably doesn't get the spot in defense either because Rory Lobb and James O'Donnell hold that spot. Yep. Um, Riley Sanders was impressive as well. He had 14 tackles in that game. Uh, probably doesn't get the nod either. And also Caleb Poulter, Riley Garcia and, Orf and Arthur Jones were all impressive. But yep. unfortunately for Arthur Jones, we've asked him. Yeah. Uh, so uh, selection dilemmas, but um, yeah, we'll see how they line up. Yep, absolutely. And then for Hawthorne, obviously just simple one, CJ coming in for Harry Morrison. Um, CJ under a bit of an injury cloud. Yep. Um, so uh, probably a bit of a risk. Yeah. Um, the big story for the Hawks is Will Day is out still. So yeah. that means that Finn McGuinness probably holds his spot, yep. um, especially after his VFL performance. He was pretty impressive at 30 disposals and a goal. Although Josh Ward and Jai Sarong were also impressive. I don't think they'll be named, but with 26 disposals and a goal for Ward and 29 and 10 marks for Sarong, that's something to consider there. Um, CJ is a risk given he was out with that calf injury and does have a lot of lingering injury issues. Um, got through the game in the VFL on limited minutes, so probably gets the nod there. And Harry Morrison, unlucky to be um, ousted from the team, but you've got to assume that Luke Bruce gets the nod there. He's probably got the runs on the board to be named sub, I yeah, reckon. absolutely. So, a really interesting. I'm like looking forward to this one a Huge lot. Game. Um, I think from my prediction, I think the doggies are going to get over them just because of their, um, their, you know, their forward half game. Uh, Hawks, a little inexperienced. They haven't played a night game for yeah. all year, I think it is. And, and But they are great on the MCG. But pretty much a coin flip, but I'm leaning towards uh, Western Bulldogs. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, the Hawks don't have the nighttime experience, but the Dogs don't have the MCG experience of the Hawks. And I think the Hawks probably play the MCG better than anyone yeah. in the comp. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with the Hawks. Why not? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next week. All right. Moving over to the next game. So Battle of the Bridge in a final. Um, you know, always going to be a good game between these two sides. So Sydney versus GWS Giants at the SCG 320 Saturday Arvo game. There's a lot to work through here, yeah, so I'll go over them pretty quickly. But for yep. Sydney, we've got, um, you know, the, uh, Heaney and McCartan were rested. Um, and then with Pat Clee and McInerney coming in for Cleary, Francis, Fox and Taylor Adams. Yep. And then Giants, a uh, big list here. <laughs> Lockie yeah. Ash, Bedford, Daniels, Riccardi coming coming in for Keith McMullen, uh, Hayes, Nick, Br uh, Callum Brown and Xavier O'Halloran. So... Let's start with Tom Papley. Yeah. So he's probably the big talking point for Sydney. He's a massive talking point. Him and McInerney are big talking points. Not certain whether they will be named, but um, so the question is whether you rest them with the safety net of the double chance being a qualifying final or you deploy them to maximize a chance of a home prelim, which especially for interstate clubs, you really need to win that premiership. The Giants will not want Tom Papley to play, so that's something to consider there as well. It, like Small forwards are very crucial in finals, especially at forward stoppages. Yep. Um, and don't underestimate the impact of Justin McInerney if he were to come back into the team because he was one of Sydney's best throughout the first half of the year, probably an All-Australian squad contender when he was um, playing. Yep. Uh, so that's one to watch there. Elite work rate on, along that wing, so um, he'll be massive in. And then Heaney and McCartan are relatively non-stories because they were just managed for that last game. Yep. So, uh, yeah, they'll play no dramas. Yeah, absolutely. And then for the Giants, uh, Toby Bedford, uh, very interesting in probably going yep. to be coming in and taking a tag or yep. giving a tag, actually. Yeah, so Bedford comes in, yeah, obviously. Uh, he, you got Heaney, Warner or Goulden take your pick. <laughs> I think Goulden's probably been the one who's killed them the last few times. So, yep. you assume he goes there. Brent Daniels, obviously huge as well. He's one of their most important players. That last performance, um, round 23 against Fremantle, we've ranked as our second best performance of the year. Yeah. Just ridiculous numbers. Um, so they're, yeah, they're both critical, obviously. Um, so Brand, uh, Callum Brown likely omitted for Jake Riccardi. It doesn't matter too much because they're both just there to support Jesse Hogan, who's the one they kick to every time. O'Halloran's unlucky because he's been pretty good this year. Um, but Lockie Ash has got to come in with uh, from his suspension and... Um, provide that halfback dash along with Lockie Whitfield. Uh, and Isaac Cumming probably comes in and takes the sub role as well. So, yeah, Giants. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, my prediction, now the start of the year at our preseason predictions, I did take GWS uh, as premiers. So, I'm going to back them in here. I love Toby Bedford, obviously, because it came from the Ds and I just like the way they're playing at the moment. 
it, it is going to be pretty tough, obviously, the SCG against Sydney, who are yep. the premier, uh, minor premiers. So, but I'm still going to take GWS by 17 points. Uh, what do you reckon? Well, after a like, end-of-season collapse for the Swans, where they seemingly <laughs> lost all their players and just seemingly just fell off the map, yep. they've got all their best 23 available again. So they could be back to the best in the comp. So I'll go with Sydney for now. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving over to the final game over at the Gabba. It is Brisbane and Carlton. 7.30 p.m. Saturday night. Massive game. Um, our predicted ins for starting with Brisbane. So Jack Payne and Starsevich coming in for Joyce and Answorth. And then Carlton obviously have uh, a lot to <laughs> a lot to bring in. Big All stories. the big names as well. So Kerno, Deconing, Mackay, McGovern, Williams. Um, and then coming in for uh, more Pittenet. Always Durden and Jack Carroll. I'm out of breath. So, um, <laughs> yeah, let's start with Stasevich for Brisbane. Yeah, I'll start with Jack Payne. So he's had okay. that, he had that foot injury, played in the VFL, uh, wasn't overly impressive um, in the loss, but Chris Fagan did acknowledge that that wasn't, probably wasn't the game uh, to get a good indication of how good form you're in. It was very gusty conditions uh, in that loss. Uh, but he's probably named in favour of Dara Joyce, who um, is omitted here. Yep. Uh, Brandon Stasovic had hamstring awareness, but he'll return. Uh, he was pretty much just managed for round 24. Um, he's a crucial in because he'll take Carlton's sort of mercurial small forward, whoever that is. It yep. might be Elijah Hollands. Could be Jack Martin, who we haven't named, but could be one to watch there. Didn't fit um, on the list. Didn't fit on the list, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Noah Answorth is probably, yeah, probably the one who gets ousted there. Yep. Um, Harry Sharp is another one who'll be looking to hold his spot. And because Bruce Reville is now available, he played in the VFL as well. It wasn't very impressive. But no one was that impressive for Brisbane except for Jared Lyons, yep. who probably doesn't get named. He's been out of favour all year. So yep. that's Brisbane. Absolutely. And then for the Blues, obviously, um, let's start at the top. So, cool. Kerno, big name. All right. So, Kerno, yeah, obviously the biggest story here. Um, so, they've got it's four major ins. You're hard-pressed to find four bigger ins than uh, the ones here, excluding De Coney because he's not a certainty. But yeah. Kerno, Mackay, McGovern and Williams are all nearing certainties. They were somewhat managed for round 24. Um, yeah, so two common medalists. Yeah. Uh, an intercepting back and a mercurial forward and Zach Williams. Uh, and then Tom DeConing had that lung and foot issue. You got Adam Chera, you got Jack Martin, and you got Sam Doherty, who are all firm as potential chances. Yeah. None are a certainty, and Voss has admitted that he will be weighing up how many is too many. So that's one to watch there. Um, but it could be eight additions. Yeah. Like we haven't named eight, but it could be eight, and they're mostly stars as well. So it's massive. Yeah. And it leaves some some unlucky omissions. So Mark Pittnet probably comes out if DeConing's named. Um, Ashton Moyer and Brody Kemp are unlucky to not be named. Moyer especially, he's provided some real excitement in the last couple of weeks, but he falls out. Same with uh, Durden and uh, Carroll, which will leave Michael Voss probably shuffling some magnets around there. Um, and Jackson Bins and Cooper Lord and, and Orazio Fantasia probably hold their spot. Uh, they're, they're probably on the chopping block if um, the rest of the potential inclusions are named. And then Sam Doherty, want, want to mention him, he's the big story there. Hey Phoenix here from the editing bay of this video. So obviously when we filmed this video, Doc Kitty had not been named in the team yet. We thought we were safe because you know they don't play till Sunday. Uh, obviously we filmed this video early on Tuesday morning, but Sam Doherty is gonna be playing in that blue side. It's a great story if you wanna hear more from Sam Doherty and watch the video of him finding out that he's going to be playing. Uh, it's in our YouTube channel somewhere. I think the video uploaded before this. So go check it out. Obviously, the rest of the video, we're going to be talking like Sam Doherty hasn't been named, um, but he is. Great story. Uh, all right, back to the video. Yeah, biggest risk by far to be named. Obviously, yeah. he suffered that ACL in O round, but he could provide a massive emotional boost if yeah. he were to be named and could be a good idea to name him as the sub. Given yep. that's less risk associated, and yeah, as I said, could provide that massive boost yep. for Carlton in a game that they're not expected to win. So yeah, I think he should be going up there for the vibe alone. Um, I don't. I wouldn't be playing him if I was Michael Voss. Although uh, Michael Voss has a bit more coaching experience than I do. Um, but my prediction here, I'm going to say, I, I think it's going to go pretty much the same way as it did last year. Yeah. That I think it was a prelim. Um, Carlton, Carlton start got well out. Then, yeah, they yeah. start well, and then Brisbane just sort of overtake them. Um, so I'm going to say Brisbane by about. Four goals. Yeah, it's hard to go past Brisbane here. You'd love the story for Carlton, but I'll go with Brisbane. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, that wraps it up for our uh, lineups, our predicted lineups for the 2024 AFL Finals Week 1. Uh, we'll be doing these every week coming into each finals game. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Phoenix. And don't forget, you can catch all the latest AFL news at zerohangout.com.